Okay, let's get down to business. Hi, I'm Danny Quinn, and welcome to another episode of First Impressions. On today's episode, Guy Ritchie makes his long overdue return to the gangster movie subgenre as Matthew McConaughey, Charlie Hunnam, Eddie Marzan, Colin Farrell, and Hugh Grant lead an all star cast in The Gentleman. This movie revolves around Mickey Pearson, played by Matthew McConaughey, a notorious cannabis dealer who's looking to sell his business to American billionaire Matthew Berger, played by Jeremy Strong, so he can retire peacefully with his wife Rosaline, played by Michelle Dockery. However, Pearson's business has attracted the attention of two rivals seeking to bring him down, the Daily Prince editor, Big Dave, played by Eddie Marzan, and Triad Underboss, Dry Eye, played by Henry Golding. And his drug compound is subsequently raided, driving the value of his business down. And if that's not enough, Mickey's right hand man Raymond, played by Charlie Hunnam, has to contend with the shady private investigator Fletcher, played by Hugh Grant, who has been sent by Big Dave to disgrace Mickey, but also senses his opportunity to become the king of the jungle. The career of Guy Ritchie has been quite a fascinating one to say the least. He first made his name with a couple of ensemble gangster flicks like Snatch and Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. And to say that both of these movies have spawned countless imitators and knockoffs is perhaps the understatement of the century. It's pretty much become a running joke throughout the film community that Britain tends to churn out low budget gangster flicks every other week. And even Ritchie himself struggled to recapture the success of those two films, with the likes of Swept Away, Revolver and Rock and Rolla either being largely forgettable or memorable for all the wrong reasons. But then Ritchie subsequently jumped back to the big leagues with the two Sherlock Holmes films, The Man from Uncle, 2017's King Arthur Legend of the Sword and last year's Aladdin. Which brings us to The Gentleman, his long overdue return to the gangster movie subgenre that made his name. Like his earlier films, it has a very busy and intricate plot which should largely keep you engaged. In fact, you might have noticed that my synopsis for the film was actually quite lengthy because it is not easy to simplify the plot of The Gentleman. Like, there is so much shit going on in this film. There's so many subplots, so many characters to keep track of. It really just kind of feels like Guy Ritchie had 10 million different ideas for this film and just decided to include every single one of them in the film. And normally that would probably be a bad thing, but I gotta hand it to Ritchie. I think he does a really solid job mixing and matching all of these different plot beats and not making it seem overly convoluted, and that's kind of emblematic of the film as a whole. It takes things that really shouldn't work under any circumstances and finds a way to make them work. For example, the main framing device of the film where he grants Fletcher is attempting to blackmail Raymond is basically just nothing more than exposition, which Raymond already kind of knows. But thanks to witty writing and Richie's direction, it somehow really fits. And it also kind of helps that the scenes between Fletcher and Raymond are easily some of the best in the film. Because it's these two men constantly trying to one-up each other with Fletcher usually coming out on top. But it also has this very weirdly meta angle where Fletcher continuously makes references to the filmmaking process such as when he comments that the story that he's trying to tell is cinematic and should be shot in an anamorphic format. Yes, it's the kind of movie that has a film, not digital reference, which I honestly did think was kind of clever. Or how he presents his findings in the form of a screenplay. You could almost see Fletcher as a reflection of Richie himself. In fact, as strange as it sounds, I think I kind of saw a little bit of myself in the character because he's always spinning yarns, toying around the truth, and designating each character's role in the central conflict. Or whenever he just randomly name drops Francis Ford Coppola's The Conversation at one point, and how it came out in between both Godfather movies. Yeah, I think I can relate to this character way too fucking much. The cast in general are all terrific, playing these very broad, larger-than-life characters. Grant and Holm are both excellent, but they're not the only highlights of the film. Henry Golding looks like he's having a lot of fun as the antagonist, Jeremy Strong bumps his role up quite nicely as he challenges inner Alan Cumming, but Colin Farrell is an absolute scene-stealer's coach, the Irish gym owner who's gradually roped into Mickey and Raymond's story through no real fault of his own. Like everybody else in the film, Farrell is an absolute scene-stealer. And there's also the fact that he's coaching a bunch of youths who do rap numbers and record the crimes that they're committing as a music video, which is probably the best thing I will ever see in any movie ever. 
But while I do think Richie does a solid job tying all the different plot points together, it's not done flawlessly. There are a few things that don't really add up. Case in point, Eddie Marzan's Big Dave, who's established as a key player in the plot, as he's the one that sort of gets much of it going, but then he just sort of sits out much of the rest of the movie. Despite a strong performance from Marzan, I don't think this character really works as well as he could have. He's just set up in the beginning, and then he doesn't really appear again until the final stretches of the film. It's almost to the point where I actually kind of forgot Eddie Marzan was in this film. The same could also kind of be said for Matthew McConaughey, who's undoubtedly great in the role of Mickey. He's charismatic, intimidating, and he's a dominating presence every time he's on screen. But with all the wacky shit that's going on in this film, he never really stands out for some reason. He's supposed to be the main character, yet so much of his deeds are carried out by Ray, which is probably intentional on Richie's parts, but it's frustrating to see McConaughey sit out so much of the first half of the film. He only really starts to play a major role in the film in its second half. Michelle Dockery likewise is fantastic as his wife. She's cunning, ruthless, and manipulative almost to a T. She's very much the female equivalent of her husband. But again, the movie doesn't really do much with the character. Aside from maybe the final scenes where she's put in a perilous predicament, the film also kind of comes apart in its final 20 minutes as it feels like Richie is fully aware at how all over the place and busy the film is and it's just rushing to try and resolve all of the remaining plot points and tie up any and all loose ends as quickly as possible. But I gotta admit some of it is done in very clumsy and cumbersome fashion, especially as he just keeps piling on the plot twists one after the other. And that's before we get to the film's ending which ends on on this very bizarrely meta notes and it's one that I really have mixed feelings about. On the one hand I do think it wraps up in a pretty cool interesting way but on the other hand it's also very self-indulgent and Mr Ritchie quite frankly if I were you I probably wouldn't put a poster of the man from uncle in the background of one shots. Just saying. So yeah, The Gentleman is an enjoyable film. It's not quite as tightly crafted or as meticulously plotted as Snatch and Lockstock, but it's still a solid addition to his filmography and it's far from his worst film. It's full of his usual bag of tricks such as his signature flair for winning dialogue and back and forth banter that feels like somebody just completely unshackled him after his work on Aladdin. The meta angle of the film also works quite well as Richie sends up his own image, as do the colourful cast of characters all brought to life by terrific late performances. It does kind of come apart a little bit in its third act and it does end on a very overindulgent note, but it's still a lot of fun regardless. And if you liked Richie's past movies, I think you'll definitely like this one as well. I'm going to give The Gentleman a strong 7 out of 10. If you liked Lock, Stock and Snatch back in the day, I'd definitely say check this out. I mean, it'll definitely feel like a fun trip down memory lane. But if you're not really a fan of Guy Ritchie, this movie won't really do anything to win you over. So, The Gentleman, have you seen it yet? What did you think of it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? What did you like about it? What did you not like about it? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks, thank you once again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment, maybe even consider subscribing to my channel. Also, if you have subscribed to my channel, don't forget to click the little bell icon. That way you'll be notified whenever new videos are uploaded. And if there's anything I can do to improve my presentation, do let me know. I'm always happy to hear feedback as long as it's somewhat constructive. If you want to follow me on social media or support me on Patreon or check out my new websites, Links are below down in the description. And until next time, I'm Danny Quinn, and I hope you have a pleasant evening.